Well, hello and welcome to another uh, edition of the Spooky Show. Um, tonight, as you can see, Dan hasn't been able to make it because he's not been very well. Uh, so I'm joined this evening by Eric and uh, the wonderful, he's put there in his uh, little caption, Reverend William David Parry, David William Parry, but he is actually a bishop. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh my God, I wish someone had told me. Yes, I'm telling you, you're wonderful, and we're so pleased you're here. <laughs> now, welcome. Um, can I call you Reverend? David, David, David. call me David. Okay, David. Um, we're so pleased to have you on again. At last, it's been way, way too long. Um, we've got so much to catch up on. Um, but firstly... I want to talk about your new your service that you're starting up again online. Um, I, I saw somewhere on on social media that you'll be doing this all online, and people can come and uh, worship or whatever it is that you're going to do um, online with you. So, when does it start? Uh, what time? Where can we see it? What is it about? I, I love the or whatever you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? Hey, Miss Miss Cheeky. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, now, oh, God, and thereby hangs a tail. I mean, before I knew you lot, I actually was uh, training for clergy. I was sort of part clergy um, with uh, the Metropolitan Community Church, which is a gay church. Mm. It comes from America. I was also involved with the Unitarians. Unitarians are the sweetest people on the earth. Yeah. But you can never get anything done. You know, uh, <laughs> gr group hugs and collective cups of tea. But you never get anything done. Uh, in MCC, we were angry. We right. were. Um, and you got everything done. But the trouble is we were so angry, we ended up fighting with each other. So, um, you know, I was training as a, a, a worship leader. I did it uh, uh, for a long time with them. The trouble with free church is everything takes forever. Um, I went on a, a long journey. And I tell you a sad bit. Um, as a gay man, mm. um, I will never forgive socialists. This should get some comments. <laughs> um, for the simple reason people were falling dead around me with AIDS, HIV in those days. Yeah. The church was emptied within a couple of months of men. And Labour, as well as the Tories, wouldn't touch it because it wasn't, wasn't an electable issue. Don't mm. touch the gays. And it was only when, and it's arguable how it started getting into the heterosexual community. I mean, there are lots of theories, um, and I don't really want to get into all of that because, you know, an, another tragedy, another sadness hits the human race. So does it really matter how it got there? The point is eventually it started affecting the heterosexual community as well, the main community. Yeah. And all of a sudden, something needs to be done. And there are all these adverts on TV, you know, about taking precautions and being careful. Yeah. How dare you? How dare you? I mean, it ended up uh, with me and MCC, the reason I left, because I've still got lots of friends there and I've got lots of minister friends still there, Yeah. Um, was I was at a funeral every week for a year. And you think at the beginning, right, January, okay. I mean, we're talking funerals, not just days out. Yeah. February, okay. By the time it got to November, I actually couldn't take any more. Um, not a good qualification for somebody thinking of being clergy. <laughs> you're either called or you're not, but I couldn't. I couldn't. And yeah. we all, I said to them all, I, I'm sorry, I can't do this. You know, yeah. I've got to go, I've got to take a step back. I've got to go searching uh, I've got to see what all this means. And I went on a, a, a long journey to where I am now. Mm. Um, we were to bounce over things, I suppose. About three years ago, we started um, an LGBTQIA. How many letters are there now? I can't remember. <laughs> LGBTQIA plus something. Yeah. Uh, uh, church in Ballam. Um, I used to live in, in London. I lived in Clapham in London, where, where I was very happy for a very long time. And uh, we church shared. Uh, we were St. Valentine's Hall, we, which was open to everybody. You had a belief. You didn't have a belief. 
Yeah. You were looking for meaning. You were looking for community. We are your home. Come and join us. Now, it's just not true that Christians all hate each other. A lot of the time, yes, but yeah. not all the time. It's not true you never get support. All the other churches around us were really, really comforting, friendly, nice, supportive. But they realised we had zero resources, the old chestnut. Yeah. Uh, and they wanted to see how things were going to go. I mean, we did last three years. We held regular services of worship. Everyone was welcome. We we had some very good times. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sadly, um, when we moved up to Butte nine months ago now in the Hebrides, I was hoping somebody would, would keep the church going down there. No one was really in a position to do that. And that's not me bitching. That's not me No, bitching. no, no. You know, a lot of our congregation, and I'll never forgive the governments or, or the opposition for the way they handled the lockdowns. I'll, I, I don't want to get into the rights and wrongs of is there a virus, isn't the virus, what is it, what does it do? Don't want to get yeah. into that. Uh, a lot of our congregation were elderly um, and a lot of our congregation, yeah, I'm the robust type. So, you know, you, oh, you want to make something about me being gay. Okay? But, you know, a lot of people are not like that. Some people no. are very fragile. Yes. And, uh, you know, it ended up with a lot of people in, in our congregation, which is one of the reasons we started putting services online as well. They were yeah. afraid to leave their houses. We still know elderly people who will not go out because of the way the government handled that the, and the opposition. Yeah. If you agree with everything they say, it reinforces the scare. I'm sorry. You know, so we started um, during the lockdowns just slightly yeah. before to hold these services. If you read the regulations properly, yes, you could hold irregular services. We held one every month. We followed all the regulations. And again, people like that. But the uprush was really there was no one to take over when my partner and I wanted to come up here with all the contacts and, you know, some of our more fragile congregants yeah. i think they'll forgive me for putting it that way you know they don't <laughs> they weren't really comfortable with new people coming along and who are they and what do they want and so we decided very reluctantly to close our doors uh, yeah. but st valentine's hall lives on um i've been a lifelong i'm a lifelong pacifist i've been a pacifist as well as a gay activist for most of my life on and off <laughs> you don't make it a lifestyle but you do make it <laughs> something you live for yeah. Um, and the way the world is going at the moment, um, I mean, it was the, the United uh, America again in the UN. Was it yesterday, the day before, that vetoed another ceasefire call? Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, I mean, we're, we're, and this is because of domestic politics in all of our own countries. This has to stop. This is madness. So um, what we're going to do is online because we have some experience doing services online. We're opening a peace church. Uh, that's not an original idea. If you look at the extreme Protestants, like the Anabaptists, like the Quakers, mm -hmm. um, who are very well known for their move, you know, their participation in peace movements and so on, they pioneered that centuries ago. We're trying to do likewise in the uh, old Catholic Apostolic Church, where I'm based at the minute, where I have the honour to serve as a priest. And we're going to do it online for anyone who's interested. I mean, the idea is midday on the first Sunday of every month. So next, the next first Sunday, <coughs> excuse me, will be our, our, our opening. Um, yeah. And, it, you know, I, my model's always been like the sort of the old Gnostics. Um, if, and of course, you know my link and my interest with that. You know, if you go back to the second century, the first century, there would have been priests, there would have been ministers. And uh, I mean, there wasn't even a Bible then. People forget that the book hadn't been codified. It hadn't been gathered together. So you might have a, a, a chapter or you might have a verse. And what the priest, the priestess, would do is stand at the front as the, the guide, the guru uh, in these matters and maybe read from the yeah. scripture and then ask everyone to meditate. Yeah. What does this mean to you? You know, where are we going? What, what is the author? What is the saint? What is the apostle? What is the disciple trying to say here? You know, what is your heart telling you? What is your mind telling you? So I want to reintroduce that type of service dedicated to anyone that really and truly believes in peace. I don't want to talk about the, the Middle Eastern situation specifically. Yeah. Um, I've lost some friends over that uh, who, were in, who were in Israel, um, yeah. Jew, Jewish friends of mine in Israel. 
I mean, they are so... I, uh, there was a, a famous philosopher called Hegel who said that, you know, real tragedies in the world are not between right and wrong. They're between two rights that are in conflict. And yeah. that's my view of what's gone on there. We mustn't forget how the present conflict started. And we mustn't forget the terrible lives of the Palestinians. You know, so All I right. want to talk about peace. I don't want to talk about blame. I don't want to talk about what's wrong with the Ukrainians, uh, Ukrainians and the Russians. I don't want to talk about that. What I want to talk about is how we get as many ceasefires as we can globally, externally, and how we make peace with our own spirits in our own hearts and with our family. Oh, they can be difficult. With our family, <laughs> with, we all know how odd families can be. With our families, with our friends, and ultimately with ourselves. Yeah. So that's the idea of the Peace Church. Um, I think, <laughs> I'll have to update this probably, I think we're looking at 12 noon, high noon. High noon. Um, on the high noon <laughs> of the first Sunday, but I'll let everybody know because that's one of the last things to be hammered out. Does that does that put a, a, a sort of gloss on it? Maybe. That sounds that sounds fantastic. And can I just say, be, and before we go any further, a big thank you to uh, to you, David. Um, oh. Give me a second <laughs> for what you're doing uh, and what you have done and what you continue to do for the LGBTQ plus whatever community because it, yeah. it's it's so needed. Thank you. Um, I, I'm i not the sort of person to uh, lead a double life or take things lying down. As I say, lots of people, you know, we're all different. It doesn't mean you're a worse person if you can't do that. You're a different person. But mm. with me, uh, right, you're yes, prejudice. I right, step outside and say it to me, face. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that's no. me. That's me. Yeah. Um, certainly, I, I spent most of my life in a state of confusion. I think early life, early life, you know, teenager, early adulthood, uh, because the what if you've got a spiritual calling and not simply a spirituality, I think that's yeah. quite different. Yeah, uh, you, know, you can't possibly be gay. <gasps> so you know, it slowly, <laughs> slowly dawned on me that the two things were 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 were, were at work within me. Um, mm. I mean, I used to do pioneering work. I, I with the uh, Gay Liberation Front way yeah. way back. And yet, why don't you see me with Ian McKellen and other people and all the photographs? Because I was right at the back praying with people <laughs> and not stealing a photo of at the front of the mark. Uh, and I'm still pleased I did that because that was yeah. what was needed. You know, they, yeah. they were the prominence. They were doing what they were doing. So many people just needed a big hug and they needed yeah. you know, a kiss. You know, you, you're a valuable human being. They just needed that. And so exactly. I flirted so, yeah. with all that. I did all that. Um, when I realised um, I was gay, I mean, it, no one thinks I'm gay and I'm proud. I mean, if you're not making it some weird religion, which some people do, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you, you just think it's a fact of life. You know, right? Yeah. OK, there we are. Uh, but that, of course, is when the real battle starts, because, you know, what do we do uh, about being us? in every particular type of situation and you do go through it i mean there was mm. there have been times i've been pushed to the floor spattered in the face um i mean recently uh for reasons we go into again i mean moving up here was a bit of an eye opener there's an lgbt presence on butte and um, we haven't got involved with them yet because i was bombarded Simply because I wish them well. They're thinking of having a prize march up here. All I did was wish them well. And was bombarded with insults across social media when they realised who I was. And I was, an, uh, uh, you're a clear pervert. Um, that's all you are. And, oh, uh, you know, God. name it. I be, Name it, I've been called it. And whatever. Sticks and stones. You know, the point is, you know, you, you don't want it rubbing up onto other people. You don't want it no. overflowing. So you tend to take a back seat. Um, I can't imagine doing otherwise. I mean, at the end of the day, LGBT issues are a human right. They're a human rights issues. Uh, it doesn't mean you're endorsing paedophilia. Lots of our enemies want to conflate this with yeah. other things. Those are things to do with jurisprudence and the law. They are not to do with people's tastes or, or people's prejudices 
And, you know, I don't know uh, what that particular mindset is, but I'm, I'm willing to be guided on it. But certainly it's not the same experience as being gay or lesbian no. or trans. No. Um, no. And it's simply... Sarah's, that, Sarah's got uh, um, let, let a me, comment. Let me just finish this. To be, I want to say one thing. Um, but going back to MCC days, I mean, everyone's trans now, darling, and so am I. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if I go back to those days... I remember, I'm not casting aspersions, but I was 10 years with MCC. I'd say I met two, 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 I hope you said two genuinely trans people and not people just exploring, right? No, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And their, their lives are not the sort of lives that you really want. I mean, they were sad beyond belief yeah. because they knew they were never going to meet a partner. They were, they were never really going to lead the happy life that both of them deserved. Yeah. Um, you know, so I mean, now everybody's trans, and I tend to put a lot of it down to fashion. Although, of course, <laughs> the, the the balance of that is a lot more people feel safe enough to come out now. Yeah. Um, and you know, but um, it was that I suppose more than anything else, the gross injustice being visited upon people that were vulnerable already and had done nothing wrong. Yeah. I mean, that's what that's what was sort of. Part of my motivation, right? I'll yeah. shut up now, Vivian. Shut <laughs> up, David. What does what Sarah say? She says, Well, before Sarah, she, go on, go on, Eric. That I'm part of the LGBTQ community being trans. I am scared of the current, um, I can't read that climate, climate, and I feel the transphobes are turning the LB. LGB community against the trans community and trying to split us. That's not my experience. I, I can't say um, anything that's not my experience. Certainly, I've not really heard, you know, you get to meet loads and loads of people in the wider, wider LGBTQI plus community. I've not really heard of anyone in the British context speaking against trans people. I mean, that would that would strike me as very, very odd. Mm -hmm. um, certainly some trans people need to allow social conversations to take place. Yeah. Um, you know, they, it's not like the old days, you know, where a discovery would have been made. I mean, all of this comes from the Human Genome Project, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, where they're mapping genes. I mean, the new, one of the new Bibles, you know, they're mapping genes, they're mapping the chemistry, they're mapping everything. And all of this really evolves from the fact that somebody – some bright spark, of it. God, 20 years ago now, 20 odd years, discovered there were male and female brains and they weren't necessarily in a male or female body. It could go lots, all sorts of ways. Yeah. You know, more recently, they've discovered even something more complex. It's not unsettling. It's staggeringly interesting. You know, that actually different parts of the brain can, <laughs> can resonate with different genders. I find that fascinating. And yeah. so, you know... You know, in the old days, somebody, you know, an Einstein figure, a Newton figure, uh, would have made a discovery and people would be shocked and horrified. And then the discussion would start and it would basically filter through community. And eventually we'd all make our minds up about what we thought and why. I mean, that's really what happened with gay people and lesbians. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, everyone just started discussing it, flower power. Yeah. You know, what does it all mean? Is it as terrible as we think? Well, no, it's obviously not. And I think that's the, the state of the state of dialogue, the state of conversation we are with trans people at the moment. And some trans people, and I, I'm not having a go in any way, they're, they're cautious, and I fully understand the reason of allowing that conversation to happen. I fully understand that. But it must happen. It must yeah. happen. And I, I think it's in my experience of the British scene, uh, and I hope my friend who wrote that, you know, you've got my hugs, you've got my love, come to us, come to the church, you know, we'll do everything we can for you. If I can put you in the right direction to meet the right people, to re meet the right group, if that's what you want, I'll do that. If I possibly can, you know, don't feel cut off, don't feel isolated. But as I see, that's not my experience uh, of more prominent people in the LGBTQA plus community. I, sometimes they don't say things they should do, which surprises me a little. But I put that down to being human, and they're only being 24 hours in the day. 
Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm caught like that sometimes. You know, I do a an interview or something like this, and then you know, on the way home, oh bugger, I know I should have said this, that, and the other, and I hadn't, and I didn't. Yeah. You can't cover everything. You, you know, we're we're human beings. We're not angels. Um, you know, I hope that's not happening. I pray that's not happening. All I can say is, in my experience, I haven't heard of it or seen it happening. Uh, and, you know, big hugs and lots of love and, and maybe keep in contact and let me know if there's anything I can do. Yeah. I want to ask you, David, paranormal. <laughs> that word, the P word. Am, am I paranormal? Yes, I am, Missy. Yes, <laughs> you are paranormal, <laughs> uh, but not in the way that... Uh, <laughs> Like some of us in the chat, oh, we'll go out and do these events and stuff like that. But you know more about paranormal than you let on. You've been at it for a while. <laughs> and I've had no complaints. And I've had a... <laughs> Not from the spirits anyway. <laughs> hey, they should be so lucky. Well, <laughs> I do have one question before you go into all that. Yeah, I mean, I've got some, I can see the non-binary bit. Remember, I'm a, anyone with the questions, they don't come up clearly on my screen. And I, I have a certain, you know, my eyes are 65-year-old eyes. So if I get to a certain point, I just see colours. I don't really see. Wait, Wait what's that, Eric? Eric? But I, I spotted something about non-binary. I've got some friends with non-binary. Um, mm. And that's another of those conversations that needs to take place. Yeah. I mean, as far as I know, the science, I think we throw away mainstream science at our peril because none of the other stuff really makes much sense unless we've got that as a bedrock. <laughs> um, the trouble with um, conversation, with dialogue, with discourse about non-binaries is that was that comes from a later period in the Human Genome Project when people are beginning to work out it was different parts of the brain and not just the brain itself. I think the conversation with non-binaries is really just starting. Um, you know, and I think that what a fascinating conversation. I mean, you know, it's it, in, if anything, it shows how backward Western societies can be yes. compared to somewhere like India. You know, I was having a go at somebody the other day, a, a friend of mine who's American, actually. You know, um, you know, the third oh, that Victorian phrase. You know, the third, the third sex, which has managed 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 to cover everything. Um, it's too blunt, it's too primitive. I mean, if you go to India, they openly talk about and have done for a thousand years at least five genders. So, you know, if anything, we're catching up with those so-called simple societies. And certainly in traditional Chinese society, there were, there were many more, I think, than five. I mean, the communists came along, terrible Puritans communists, <laughs> you know, and they wanted to put a stop to all of that. I mean, I mean yeah. some of their scientists are mind-blowing. But I think the official conversation over there at the minute is that's all interesting. Let's just forget it. Let's just forget it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sooner or later, it will reemerge and it has to reemerge because it's part of the human condition. And we need to talk about it. So, yeah, I've heard of non-binaries, um, asexuals, transsexuals, you know, name it. I've heard of it. I'm not involved in every single discussion, uh, although maybe I should be a bit more. And there was a time over the last couple of years I took a step back. For the simple reason I didn't think prejudice was returning. My heavens, isn't it returning with a vengeance? Yeah, yeah, no. So, you know, I, I feel myself back on the barricades like in the good old days. But, David, um, they've, I've been hearing that there people have been forced to go to conversion therapy. Yeah. Like, even in the UK, it's still yeah. happening. It's like, yeah. what? This should be illegal. Yeah. Really, it's just, it's horrendous. Right. Well, um, to, be, to be fair to, I mean, it depends what you mean by conversion therapy. I mean, it can be as simple and as violent as somebody praying with you. Mm. Because what they're doing is denying you as a person. Yeah. Oh, let's pray about that. You, know, you pompous mm. arsehole. How dare you? you know? yeah. uh, and a, a couple of friends of mine have had that version of therapy, right. you know, uh, all the way up to chemical treatment. <laughs> Um, you know, um, <clears throat> and we need to remember where things like that led in the past. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me again. I mean, um, Alan Turing, who, of course, was the inventor of the Enigma machine, mm -hmm. uh, was homosexual. Um, mm -hmm. He worked uh, with the intelligence services in Britain during the war. His work must have saved untolds of thousands of allied lives. lives. Yeah. 
And the minute the war's over, he's prosecuted for being homosexual. <laughs> and they offered him a choice. Either you go to jail or we chemically castrate you. He didn't want to go to jail. They chemically castrated him. He couldn't do his work anymore. He could, I'm a genius with mathematics. He couldn't do yeah. it anymore. So he ended up poisoning himself. Oh. And, you know, we've got to remember there are real consequences to what is happening, you know. Yeah. The, do yeah. the door, to a certain extent, must be left open. I mean, it is conceivable that somebody's had such a terrible life, they would want to try conversion. That is conceivable. I think it must be very, very rare. Um, but, you know, I, I'm even I'm loath to say under no circumstances, because I can conceive of somebody who maybe wants to give it a try for all the wrong reasons, but maybe yeah, yeah. they should be allowed that as to a choice. Try. Yeah. Uh, you know, but certainly things like chemical castration and electrodes to the to the skull, that has to stop immediately. Yeah. But, you know, we've all got to stand together. Otherwise, I mean, this Tory government has, uh, you know, it's been promising for years. It's done sod all. <laughs> and yet we've got to keep an eye on our politicians, not just because they're all crooks, <laughs> but because we need... <laughs> Because we need to see, you know, are they living up to any of their promises at all? And that's certainly one they haven't done. No. Right, let's get on to the ghosties. Yep. <laughs> I love it I when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what you want me to say, but you'll have to guide me. Oh, you can say whatever you like. Uh, William says, I'm in, the pu I'm in public, so I can't listen. I need captions i want to hear what's being said so we'll watch later no problem william we don't mind <laughs> well, my question about investigating this uh, thing how does the spiritual side um dip into the ghost hunting side well again let's take a number of steps back okay um any any clergyman is up to the individual clergy person mm -hmm. whether they're interested in these things or not. Um, and I know some absolutely wonderful priests who are ladies. I like the word priestess. I wouldn't dare use it, but I like the word priestess. Um, I mean, you know, they have a real social conscience. They're working with the poor or they're working with the disenfranchised. I know one person who must remain nameless because she'd never forgive me for, for saying who it was. Was, doesn't want any publicity, doesn't want any type of recognition, who works with veterans, who works with the homeless and particularly veterans. You know, we want these young people to go and fight our wars, and we don't want to know them when they come back. And, oh, my God, there's a tax thing here. I'm sorry, can you just sod off? You know, I mean, that is completely unacceptable. I mean, she goes out of her way to work with them. Some of the psychiatric problems these young boys and girls come back with are off yeah. the scale. Yeah. So I'm saying all that because it's good that she's doing that. I don't think she'd have the time. I don't know about the inclination, because these things are naturally fascinating. I don't think she'd have the time to then start thinking about paranormal topics, issues, subjects. Um, I've always had a deep fascination, a very, very deep fascination with all these things. Um, I can sort of explain how all that arose, I suppose. Um, I think we've got to be very careful. I got into trouble on another paranormal show a couple of years ago. But I think we've got to be careful of vocabulary. And I didn't, that wasn't meant to sweep it all away. If we're talking about supernatural things, paranormal things, occult things, because they actually do mean very, very separate issues. And, you know, different types of entity, different types of experience, different types of energy. How, but God, I mean, it's so complicated before we go any further. I don't yeah. know all the time how it all links together. Um, you know, if somebody, I mean, Alan, Alan Cox, my good friend, who we all know here, likes, yeah. uh, likes, uh, frequently talks about negative energies, by which I assume he means something demonic. Yeah. So that would strike me as a supernatural word, because you're dealing with conscious entities from another realm who have nothing but hatred in their hearts towards human beings and that want us all dead mm -hmm. uh, and are going against the cosmic plan because that's what they're doing. That strikes me as a completely dissimilar uh, phenomena to someone on a ghost hunt. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you two, do you remember the stone tape from years ago, that remarkable yeah. show 
I mean, you know, that's that's it's that type of thing when the paranormal for me comes alive, you know. And I recently I was showing it to my 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 better half recently. It's such a clever little 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 play. It's such a clever little drama because it's actually, of course, the room itself. It's the crystallography of the bricks mm -hmm. that have recorded the intensity of what's going on in that room. What a brilliant idea! And of course, I'd nearly forgotten at the end of the uh, 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 the, the the story, the visionary girl scientist actually comes up against the real supernatural, not the paranormal. Mm. Uh, and they, they attack. They attack. There's no common ground between the ghost experiences and what she she goes through at the end of that incredible little play. Um, so I'm very, very, very interested in things like life patterns. I think places have memories. Um, stones, men here's Stonehenge and all those places have memories. Yeah. As well as other levels, you know, for me, you're look, looking, I suppose, at multi-level phenomena, some of which cross over and some of which don't. Yeah. Um, you know, people approach these phenomena on the level they're on at a particular time. I mean, I think you'd have to be some sort of Einstein figure. Why not? You know, to work with all of it at the yeah. same time. You know, uh, you know, are you dealing with something angelic? Does that mean just a positive energy? Is that something? within uh, the realm of supernature, that wonderful book by Lyle Watson years ago. You know, how, I mean, what he was saying was, how far does the idea of the paranormal actually stretch? I believe it's a lot further than anybody's guessed. You know, yeah. so if we think that, and then we start saying to each other, wow, and there's a supernatural, the minute you get as far as that goes, then there's a supernatural thing. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't know how to answer that question. You know, I, I think there are crossovers because we're dealing with multi-level experiences. And I think, you know, if you're going to go on these things, I made a joke be beforehand, before we came on, which I'm sticking to, you know, all these bloody ghost hunts. I'm sorry I'm not you know, freezing my arse off in the middle of the <laughs> night in a warehouse waiting for something to make a noise. I'm sorry. <laughs> if, if, you, if you get me a good pink gin and, and may, maybe a mobile mattress or something, I'll consider it. But otherwise, no, I'm 65, no. You know, why can't all these young huskies go out and do it? What's stopping them? Um, does it need to be done? Joking aside, of course it does. Uh, do you need um, endless academic qualifications? No, you don't. But if you're taking it seriously, do it seriously. Um, I don't like a theory of provocation. I um, mean, I... Were you at that event, Viv? I can't remember. The first NACON in Britain. Were you there? I can't remember. Were you yes. There? Yes, I yes, was. Of course yes. you were. You know, <laughs> yeah. Matt, Matt Arnold. And, uh, not Matt yeah. Arnold. What was his name? Matt something? Matt oh, Hall. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Matt, you all know who I mean anyway. Um, you know, I mean, you know, that was a good idea that, 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 that could have gone a lot further. You know, yeah. my, my problem with that, because provocation came up. Yes. Um, was that... You know, the, these are our loved ones. Yeah. You know, if we if we assume that they're not simply life patterns and auric recordings and leftovers. I mean, it was the ancient Romans that said the persona, not the spirit, not the soul, the persona lives on in the atmosphere. Uh, and what they seem to have meant was something like the etheric level, the physical atmosphere and the etheric level. Yeah. So, you know, part of us lives there. Part of us is recorded memorized by where we are in life you know and the soul has gone on maybe the spirit has gone on maybe <clears throat> and you know but people at that do at that shindig openly talking about insulting and and degrading the whole experience just so they could get a few results i mean yeah. what sort of person must you be yeah if you want your, as i said to you as you know both of you, if you want your tv contract there are better ways of doing it uh, yeah, how how dare you? There are loved ones, and our, yeah. our grandparents, our great grandparents. Have we no love in our hearts anymore? Exactly. You know, and is that really the way of getting proof? I mean, if somebody did that to me, you know, you get results. Of, you know, if I'm good and ready, you're not getting them otherwise. But you know, maybe there are various states of semi consciousness in the beyond. I mean, I like those theories where. <laughs> There are psychic husks. A lot of the time, I think people don't know they've passed over. Mm. Um, are all these things mentioned in the Bible? Yes, they are. 
Mm-hmm. You know, uh, is it legitimate for Christians to talk about these things much more than legitimate? Go to 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. St. Paul must be surrounded with crazies like us because <laughs> he lists all the spiritual gifts. Some preach, some teach, some heal, yada, 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 yada. Yeah. So he's surrounded by us lot, basically. And he's not saying no. He's just saying do it with reverence, do it with love, do it with care. And, you know, so I think if we're doing it at all, we need to do it seriously. We need to have some self-respect as well, respect for each other and the beyond. Psychic husks, I think some people pass over and they're not really, not really aware of that. Or, you know, how, I mean, was it a traumatic passing? So their their consciousness is cloudy. The, what they are has become cloudy and clouded. To have somebody screaming about torture and damnation at them strikes me as really not only immoral, but something on the verge of black magic. Uh, yeah. Does black magic exist? Yes. Does white magic exist? Yes. Again, it, it says a lot about the person who's willing to do that, that they would use those sorts of techniques, maybe in situations where the spirit entity itself is already in torment, and we're tormenting it further. So I, I get on my high horse about stuff like that. <laughs> is the paranormal a legitimate course of study for everybody and anyone? Yes. You know, but I think at the end of the day, we have to look into ourselves and say, OK, what am I bringing to it? You know, am I bringing my my careerist tendencies? OK, be honest with yourself. Am yeah. I bringing my love? Am I bringing my intelligence? Am I bringing my curiosity? Am I bringing all of it? Am I bring, bringing none of it? You know, just be honest with yourself and maybe a little more merciful on those that have been before, you know, because I think they had their own problems and their own issues. And I suspect a lot of them didn't pass over in the way that anyone should be given the dignity uh, of passing over, you know, with, I think that's, uh, we need to think of it that way. Yeah. Do you think that the um, the clergy, I'm going to call it that because it's a very yeah. big um there are lots of denominations within the clergy. Yeah. Yeah. But do you think that the clergy should get more involved in the paranormal? And I and I say that in this regard. Yeah. With people that have yeah. issues within their own home um, that may be um, are visible, that you can see and yeah. can experience. Um, I, I had a lady that I worked with for, th- for nearly three years. Uh, sadly, she passed away. It was still going on. Yeah. But the clergy came uh, and they were a help, but yeah. she in the end uh, pushed them away because we had to jump hoops and it, it went as high as the Vatican to oh, get permission wow. to get permission for uh, this particular priest to come and, and do what he did. But, and we got involved with reports and things, but we were lucky to find a man who was close by to be able to do that. She'd yeah. been to other clergy and they closed the doors on them. So yeah, right. whether she was physically having these issues or whether it was a mental thing, yeah. um, which does happen, <coughs> do you think that the, the clergy should sort of open their doors to it a little bit more on a whole? Because not all churches do. Yeah. Um, what, what are your thoughts on, on that sort of side of things? Well, you've actually asked one of the few questions I'm going to find difficult to answer. It's sneaky. Sorry. <laughs> um, no, it's good. It's good because it, I'm, you, people have to remember, you know, why aren't clergy being loud and proud all over the place? Because you've got an army of men and women who are giving their all, literally, you know, tw- you're on call 24 hours a day, unless yeah. you tell people you're not and you're retiring or, or you're having a breakdown yourself, which yeah. happens a lot. You know, and, and dealing with every issue under the sun, not just weddings and baptisms, possessions, hauntings, loss of a house. One of your relatives has gone to jail. Somebody's dying. You know, it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. And you've got to yeah. plan the life of the parish or the diocese. You know, that's the staple. That is why you're in that position. You will do that or your superiors will haul you over the carpet. And the rest of it must be added on. As it goes, I mean, I know clergy in Liverpool who are trying to do all that, but they can't because of the level of poverty in that part of the world. Right. And they're dealing most of the time with with benefits claims and going to, you know, basic job security offices and arguing with officials on behalf of people. So, yeah. you know, I mean, we're all human and we have a certain amount of energy. We don't have as much as we want and need. 
But, you know, so I can understand why a lot of people shy clear. Right. Um, I do not understand how any clergy person can close the door uh, to somebody, whether it's a mental disturbance or not. How can anybody say a mental disturbance isn't a real disturbance and linked in with the psychic and linked in with the supernatural? I mean, you know, you can't do that. I mean, uh, someone I'm very interested in, Carl Gustav Jung, um, who would have said there are no clear demarcations between that. You know, it mm -hmm. is your job as a therapist to get in there and try and talk to the person having these experiences, not to make judgments in advance. Yeah. So even if it is only, I don't know what that would mean. I mean, that's somebody's life. You know, it is a disturbance of the psyche that is also real. So if it's more than that, in the sense that there are external energies or other internal energies that might not even be your own, that are coming from other people, that are coming from the past, that are coming from the future, and all that is disturbing you and it's unsettling your peace of mind, I don't see how any clergy person can say no and close the door. I mean, it might, it might not be the gift, because I do think uh, nine times out of ten these things are gifts. It might not be your gift to deal with that. Yeah. It might not be your gift to be able to exercise that. You know, that's a different ball game. But it certainly is a demand of the profession, of the call, that you go and go and at least give succor and support and not pretend the whole thing should go away and don't don't darken my doorstep again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I, that I can't. I, I, for me, that would be a, a dereliction of responsibility. And <clears throat> there are not right, without jumping on anybody or them jumping on me. I know there are lots of reasons why that might happen. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we can't pretend that we're not involved in those realms and those spheres. And that is something to do with being clergy. I mean, <clears throat> I tend to fall out. Nowadays, it's, I'm not falling out with the paranormal people. I'm falling out with the UFO people. <laughs> <laughs> For the simple reason, you know, somebody said to me a year or so ago, what's religion got to offer compared to that? And there was this weird photo of some, something somewhere with a bit of light coming from it. And as I say, you know, these are 65-year-old lies or a bit earlier. And I couldn't see what the fuss was. I was trying so hard to see what the fuss was. <laughs> I've actually seen a UFO, so I'm not arguing whether they exist or not. Yeah. And uh, it suddenly struck me, this guy got the wrong end of the stick entirely. It, You know, spirituality isn't about externals. It's not about the world of phenomena. If you're a person of the spirit, if you've got a spirituality, if you've got a religion, you've got a mystical philosophy, it's the inner journey. Yeah. And, the, you know, there's no, it's not a fight. It's not one against the other because they're doing completely different things. And, you know, the minute you start saying, OK, I'm on that inner journey, you're opening yourself up to, to the cosmos, to much deeper levels of life. And I suppose that's a, an addendum, you know. For a clergy person to then say, right, all this is going on and I, I'm ignoring it. I, I, I just find that problematic. That would be yeah. my, my response. Yeah. yeah. No, we were very lucky. We found a uh, yeah. particular priest. We had yeah. to work with him as a group because we had to yeah. go and film, live with them, record right. and take it to him. And then he took it to his bishop and then it went higher and it went right up to the Vatican to get yeah. permission to go and then... And then they did what they did, yeah. Um, which, um, yeah, that's another story. But yes, yeah. <laughs> it was a, it was a it was a long slog, but not yeah. without good reason, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, um, spiritual is born from the heart, from the love of God. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, do, do I personally think uh, it's important to go to church? Yes, I bloody do. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But you know, why? Why is that? <clears throat> if a church is functioning properly and don't jump on me with that one because <laughs> i'll get hung if i give some real answers to that one <laughs> but if, a, if a church is functioning properly you've got the checks and balances yeah. of your 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 church family your yep. your spiritual family next to you and if you're going off the deep end they'll say you know do you, do you need some help are you okay or if it's turning into a personal spiritual fantasy Sadly, a lot of the New Age is little more than that. I mean, let's right. be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, is the New Age a reality? Yes. Are the people that ushered in the New Age giants of human experience? Yes, they are. I still enjoy reading Alice Bailey. Um, I still enjoy... Re I'm trying to think who the originators were. I mean, Rudolf Steiner, maybe it could, it could be argued. I'm just concerned about 
you know, what is church? Church only means community. I mean, you know, ecclesia, it just means community, getting together. And, you know, I think we need each other if we're really going to march seriously on, along that inner path to the ultimate, to the absolute. You know, is, you know, is any of us strong enough? Are we really sure we're strong enough that we can deal with everything we will encounter along that road? Personally, I suspect anyone that's telling themselves yes needs to look more deeply uh, because we're going to encounter negative things as well as positive things. And, you know, mm -hmm. we need not only that support, the support of prayer, the support of meditation, the support of the holy books, by which I mean all of them, the Quran, the Torah, the, the Upanishads, all of them. We need all of those resources guiding us on yeah. our quest and along our journey and good friends who look out for us and pray for us, as I say, ministers who are open to rushing out in the middle of the night and doing what they need to do, repelling and whatever, <laughs> and healing. Yeah. We need that if we're going to take spirituality and religion seriously. Um, to my mind, you know, what's, what's wrong with the Christian church nowadays? It's turned into this huge row about doctrine, and that's in every single denomination. Well, I think what he meant was in the third century. Oh, for God's sake, give it a rest. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. <clears throat> is that important? Yes, but it's not the be all and end all. So, yeah. You know, and uh, basically, if you look at theology, I mean, you know, I got a background in moral theology, so I've got the arguments in that you wouldn't believe. But, you know, so and the methods of translation differ. So what they said the text meant 400 years ago might not be what they say it means now. And in yeah. 500 years time, oh, no, no. If you look at all the commas in this particular <laughs> paragraph, what it really means is, <laughs> you know, so, you know, is doctrine important? Yes, it's not the be all and end all. We do need the experience of those that have been before us. And yet I've got this weird time slippage thing in my part of my outlook. Maybe some of those writings are inspired by our descendants, by the future. You know, we and if we're going to do it seriously, we've got to become very aware, critically intelligent, lovingly devotional. We've got to be all of those things if we're going to seriously walk the path and have the sort of encounters which will change the world. Yeah. Can I just say... Um... I want to get in this in now before because I've only got about five minutes. Oh. Um, I want to say a big thank you to you. Um, again, <laughs> we owe you a lot, you know, David. Oh, God. Um, How long have I known you? Oh, so, uh, quite a few years. <laughs> <laughs> quite a few years. <laughs> I know it's um, a long time. I know it's a long time. But um, you were one of the first people that actually lifted me up when um, a good friend of ours passed away. Mm. And he left um, a big mark. Um, he left a big hole. Um, but he also gave me a lot of education and food for thought and theory yeah. work. And he was a great archaeologist and a dreamer and a believer. And he, you know, and I think like taking him as my muse, if you like, um, yeah. learning from the past, learning from other people and, 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 and just letting people be, you know, he, yeah. he, as you know, he was one that, wouldn't think twice about dressing up and and turning up on on a location as um a, a, un, under a different name in a different guise um you know just because it was fun and he yeah. would bring history alive doing that yeah so um i think like um having love for one another uh, and as you showed me um david um and just and being just being there for one another is the most yeah. important thing i want to say again to people in the chat the first Sunday of the month, check out um, David's, uh, what would you call it? Church. Peace Online. Church. Peace, Peace Church. Peace Church. Yeah. Um, it, will be, it is going to be good. It will be good. And, and we might all learn something from David. I know over the years I have, I've learned a lot from him. Um, and if, if people want to reach out to you, David, can they? Can they find you? And Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm on all, all social media. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't get off social media. Uh, you know, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, I've got a website, www.davidwilliamperry.com, where I look an absolute bell. Um, so yeah, if people want to contact me that <laughs> way... Uh, 
through through the, through the show. I mean, yeah, I I never mind. I can't always instantly get back to people. I mean, I I think some people get a little knocked. Do it. Um, if if they have to wait, but you're sorry, sometimes you do because I'm trying to prioritize things as well. So I will get back to you. Just be patient with me. Yeah, reach me. You know, talk to me. Uh, don't forget the Peace Church will also be online. Yeah. Um, it starts online because we've no other choice. Maybe we'll get a venue. Maybe not. I mean, I'm hoping we do because I like meeting people physically. Um, but yeah, it will be online, and we'll we'll have lots of fun, and we'll explore issues that need exploring, and we'll stand by our belief that human beings are good and kind at heart. And that love is the message and that we must never forget that. Yeah. I've I lost all my comments, um, Eric. Can you can you put it up there? www.davidwilliamparry.com Okay, hold on. Oh, I do want to say one thing before we round off. <clears throat> uh, it is not true uh, of academia. I mean, there are lots of people going around nowadays conspiracy theorists i don't mind conspiracy theorists and i'm not one of them um i started a show years ago finished years ago too called uh tha talks with paulo batelli who is a conspiracy theorist um and you know it used to be a fun combo because he 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 was yes and i was no <laughs> <laughs> um, so we had lots of fun on that show and you know they're asking good questions what worried me was the fact that they think everybody is misleading you and everybody isn't telling the truth or, you know, the Smithsonian Museum is, you know, deliberately falsifying documents and hiding giant bones and, you know, the, the powers that be are, are deliberately trying to hoodwink everybody. No, I'm sure a certain amount of all that goes on. But let me tell you, as someone that dips their, 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 their toes into academia from time to time, um, it really seriously isn't like that. <clears throat> Everybody's fighting, fighting for funding, which is why the wonderful projects tend to be at the bottom of the list. You know, if, if you've got a new way to, to manufacture tanks, you'll be at the top of the list, sadly to say. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you, 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 you find it, uh, found a new way to make a hubcap for cars, you'll be at the top of the list. If you found, uh, if you invented a machine that will finally give ghosts uh, you know, physical manifestation into the everyday world, you will be at the very bottom of the list because yeah. somebody somewhere will say, oh, I'm sorry. I mean, what's the public use of that? You know, so somebody somewhere will come up with that, which must be balanced also against the fact I've hardly ever met anyone in mainstream academia that didn't have a mystery they wanted to bore you to death with. <laughs> you know, their, their, pet, their pet riddle, uh, which they want to tell you about morning, noon and night. I mean, one of the best examples was Klaus Donner, a good chum of mine. Haven't spoken to him for a couple of years because he's on a permanent dig nowadays in the Philippines. <laughs> um, and giants, giants. Um, I am sceptical as the founder of the Nephilim Conference. I'm actually sceptical. <clears throat> you know, I mean, you hear some of these people. I mean, sorry, how can a 35-foot person breed with anybody? You know, I mean, you know, <laughs> You're right, so that big and that big. I'm sorry, no, no. And you know, and also when I get I get osteoarthritis. Well, what's it like being 35 foot tall and having osteoarthritis? You know. So no, for me the answer is I'm sorry. I'm I'm really I don't go along with too much of it. Yeah. Um and you know, but as I say, a lot of them are like that. I mean, it started with Klaus, he was one of the big curators in Vienna. And his background is art and all these wonderful works of art. He'd, he'd, he'd write the catalogue. He'd, he'd you know, be the editor of all these academic catalogues. And these glorious things were sent to him year in and year out. And there'd always be one weirdo thing which he couldn't completely dismiss. I mean, nine, nine, nine. But there'd always be one where he thought, oh, that makes sense. And what he wouldn't do is throw it away. He'd sort of sideline it onto a side shelf in his office. But it got to the stage where it reached critical mass. And he's, oh, my God, there's all that stuff. The world simply isn't what we think it is. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone in mainstream academia is wrong. Remember, we, th we throw away that bedrock at our peril. If we throw that away, nothing makes sense at all. What mm. we do is we say, that's interesting, Professor. That's interesting, Doctor. Aha, uh -huh. have you heard of this bit? What does that mean in your view? 
that's when real progress is made, and that's yeah. when the world changes for the better. And that's my five penneth worth. There we are. Ah. <laughs> oh, quickly then. Is there a heaven, or do spirits simply wander the earth in limbo? Oh, gosh. Um, I hope there's a heaven. Um, of course, our good Lord would have said the kingdom of heaven is within you, yeah. yes. uh, which is scriptural. <clears throat> um, also, I'm into Swedenborg. I don't know if people know about him. A unique figure. I mean, you know, he was a, a very, very a brilliant scientist, a brilliant engineer and inventor, uh, you know, who was so eminent that Sweden gave him the surname Sweden uh, as an, a mark of honour. Mm -hmm. You know, you've done so much in the sciences. <clears throat> We're now making you Sweden. You are Swedenborg. And uh, much to his horror and everybody else's, the eye opened. He started seeing all these spirits. Um, and he, it was a shock. And he said, you know, he, he doesn't know what happened. It, one day he was experiencing spirits and spiritual life. Um, he is unique in world, in global culture for one simple reason. You have a highly trained critical scientist documenting his experience, his experiences for 30 years. It's all in the notebooks. <clears throat> and he describes his uh, heavenly experiences, his hellish experiences, his purgatorial experiences. Um, what he would say um, is that those three realms, and even more than that, exist. And largely, you position yourself, depending on the quality of consciousness that you have, the level of love that you have. In yeah. either one world or the other, he said something that caught my attention years back, that all of us go to the spirit world um, upon our passing, uh, but where they're actually for, for a very short time. If people have got to remember, what does time mean the minute we're outside of Earth, the minute history is gone? You know, is it forever or is it five minutes? Who would know? Who would know? Mm. <clears throat> but we're there for a short while, and it's our own hearts and our minds the residues within what we are, within our consciousness, that make us gravitate to the heaven worlds or the hell worlds. That for him was judgment. Uh, you bring it on yourself. How have you lived in life? You bring it on yourself. And it yeah. doesn't mean you're, you're necessarily stuck in the lower worlds forever, but maybe you need to work on yourself. I mean, that's the old Catholic idea of purgatory, of course. I mean, it's basically like one giant clinic. You know, have you seen where you're in the wrong yet? <laughs> I'm chill, do chill for God's sake. You know, so personally, yes, I can see people passing over. You know, I've heard of cases, I'm sure we all have, of people passing over into this gloomy purgatorial after existence. Yep. Whether that's their final existence, I really hope not. And of course, I draw upon the, the religious traditions of the world to say, no, that wouldn't really be uh, our final destination, to, to quote the movie. But, you know, and then arguments start about, right, is it karma? Is it providence? You know, is it divine grace? Is it this? Is it that? For me, those arguments are secondary, in a sense, because we all agree that that's the rough pattern of what's happening. Yeah, and mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I think we've got to say, well, it's something to do with us and our choices. And are we going to stand by those choices, even if they're working against us? Swedenborg said something very, very interesting, you know. Uh, that the angels, I mean, he had an anthroposophical view way before Steiner, that, um, you know, it, it was all human. How could we possibly experience anything that wasn't human? Not really. Yeah. So all the angels are really us. They're our glorious ancestors. And they're constantly trying to reach out to maybe their relatives in the lower world. Maybe, you yeah. know, those who they feel a responsibility to try and assist. But it's those in the lower world that are pulling back all the time. So, you know, uh, I can conceive of a number of post-mortem conditions. I can also probably say, judging on the the, the, the the material that I've read, maybe one or two of the psychic things I've been involved with, mm -hmm. and a marvellous book called Death and Eternal Life by Professor John Hick, well worth a read, of people being in those yeah. domains. But, you know, is it the final is it the final chapter in that story? I bet it's not. Yeah. Well, I think we've come to the end of the show. You need a rest, uh, David. <laughs> uh, but we're not going to leave this here. 
we are going to get you back on because this is just the tip of the iceberg. We love you, David, and we can't let you get away from it. We're not going to let it go for as long as it has been. We're going to get you on quite regular time time constraints allowing, you know. Um, I'm also available for bar mitzvahs, corporate parties, and anyone that wants to put their hands in their pockets. I've got a business. <laughs> There's a joke. Now, Vivian, look, I mean, this is a great show. You're a great person. Whenever you think you can get the, the old cleric back, get me back because it would be—it's yeah. really great fun. And as oh, you, you, you would... probably remember, I can talk the hind legs of a donkey. Oh, but and, we and... love you for it. We love you for it, though, David. You know, we don't mind. We don't mind. It's been—it's been too long. We've got lots more to talk about. We didn't even get onto poetry and all the other bits and pieces, but we're going to do that next time. Um, but no, do check out um, the the Peace Church first first Sunday in in of the month, isn't it? So yeah, check it out. Uh, look on David's website; it's in the chat. Uh, Eric put it up there for us kindly. Um, we will be back next week. Uh, Lois is on tomorrow night with. Um, she's doing a special on veterans, isn't she? Yep. Tomorrow, yep. and uh, she'll be to the to the grave and back on Friday night. Um, but once again, thank you very much, thank David, you. and thank you to everybody in the chat and all your questions. And thank you to Eric as well. Um, Eric, can you close it down for me? Because I think my system's just gone kaput for some reason. <laughs> I'll leave it in, in Eric's safe hands. <laughs> Take care, everyone, and be kind to one another.